गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन शालोम प्रेस द लॉर्ड जय मसी सबको वेलकम टू क्लास वील वेलकम टू आर ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट्स थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग एस दिस मॉर्निंग ऑल्सो वेलकम टू आर ई लर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स विल बी लिस्निंग टू दिस लेक्चर लेटर ऑन विल बिगिन विद अ वर्ड ऑफ प्रेयर सो कैन जिस क्लोज आर आईज एंड पॉज फॉर अ वर्ड ऑफ प्रेयर प्लीज father lord we, lord we thank you for this day lord we just come before your throne of grace lord from morning till now your grace was amazing lord lord you have given us a new day and a new life to live in this world lord lord so many of them didn't didn't get this opportunity but you have given us this new life we thank you lord as we are going for our study lord let your wisdom and knowledge fill us lord and let let whatever ma'am teaches let us listen and let, lord we should learn about it and <clears throat> I should trust in you more, Lord. I pray and bless this day in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. So we um, uh, have begun our studying uh, the publication receiving God's guidance. We began studying um, this last week, um, and we looked at chapters one and two. Today we'll try to uh, cover chapters three, four, and five. Okay. so chapter 3 uh, the word how do we receive god's guidance through his word we've looked at it quite a bit in um, the first publication but we'll look at it uh, a little more here uh, in this chapter okay we'll just begin by reading a few uh, scripture passages and i would like all of us to read it out together so let's begin uh, let's all read out psalm 119 was 105 together please your word Yes your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path okay so god's word is like a lamp like a torch light okay when you are walking in the darkness you know and there is no street lights or uh, um there is no power and you want to find your way through so when you take a torch light that will help you to uh, to know to, you know to take your right steps to go in the right path okay so god's word is like a lamp like a torch light that guides our steps okay a light that shows us the path that we need to take okay let's all read together psalm 119 verse 130 the entrance of your words gives light it gives understanding to the simple okay so um in life we uh we will go through various situations when things don't seem to make sense we don't know what is happening uh, we don't know what to do uh, there is no clarity uh, things just does not make sense and in those times god's word enlightens us at those times we can see and understand god's purpose and meaning and direction in the situation uh, that we are in through his word his word gives us purpose meaning and direction in those situations that absolutely makes no sense or is very difficult and also in those situations we receive wisdom and understanding what to do how to move ahead uh through that life situation so when you find yourself in crossroads when you find yourself facing the mountain a wall and things does not seem to make any sense in your life just read god's word god's word bring gives you will enlighten you it will give you purpose meaning and direction you will also receive wisdom and understanding what to do and how to move ahead okay let's all read psalm 37 verse 31 um it's on page number 26 in the publication let's read it together the law of his god is in his heart none of his steps shall slide okay so what does this verse say it says that when we are guided by god's word god's word makes our steps strong and firm and we will never slip and we will never slide because god's word will give us that grip that um uh, that um uh, strong and solid steps that we need to take okay so what are the common ways god speaks to us or he leads us and guides us through his written word so we look at a few things the first one is through the instruction in his words okay now god in god's word 
that he has given us already instructions for every area of our life, whether it's men mental, emotional, physical health, whether it's concerning your family or relationships, whether it's concerning church, whether it's concerning ministry, whether it's concerning your relationship with others, your relationship at the workplace, your attitude towards uh, the work that you have, the attitude at your workplace, also talks about boss and employees, how we need to relate, uh, what we need to do, talks about sin, salvation, all the doctrines, and also how we need to relate to the government. So God in his word has given us everything that is required for our lives. Okay. So in matters that he's already revealed to us in his word, we don't have to pray and ask God, what is what are you saying about this? Because his word has already revealed it to us. We just have to go read his word, look at various scripture passages in, in the Bible, uh, just read it and receive instructions and um, guidance. Okay, So we must stay aligned uh, to the instruction in God's words, even as we make our choices. But there'll be times when you want to know things about certain matters in your life, okay? Um, about marriage, about how to be a good wife, how to be a good husband, what is your responsibility, or how to overcome sin, or, uh, you know, what does God talk about um, uh, uh, moral purity or about the mind. So what you need to do at those times is, you know, you go and just uh, speak to God, tell him God, uh, help me speak to me through your word and search the scriptures, find out various scripture passages from Genesis right up to Revelation on the topic that you are looking at and study it together. Okay, don't just take one scripture passage and look for guidance or interpret that because that will lead into wrong interpretation. You need to look at it in the entirety of scripture. What is God telling me? Okay, and God will lead you from one scripture passage to the other, and then you put everything together, and then you will know what God is speaking about a certain matter that you are uh, looking for or you're concerned about. Okay, the second thing, um, you know, how God uh, speaks to us or leads to us through His written word is through the quickened word. Okay. Now, I've already shared this when I was, uh, uh, we were uh, learning about uh, fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Now, what about the quicken word? Yes, Shani? So, for um, I'm make sure, trying to make sure I understand. So, you're saying that when we're asking God for guidance, that we don't just look at scriptures. We're supposed to look at, um, we don't go through scriptures. Can you explain that? Because I'm kind of confused about that. You're saying we have to look at the word in its entirety. Can you explain that again? Uh, yeah, so if I heard you right, you're just trying to ask me if about how to look at the entirety of Scripture, how to understand God's guidance to the entirety of Scripture. Yeah, because you had said, I thought you had said one thing, but then you said certain situations like, um, you, I know you said marriage. I couldn't remember where else you said you have to you can't just look at a particular scripture you have to look at you have to look more in depth or something like that can you explain that again okay so what i'm saying is uh, i said that in uh, god has uh, uh, you know it, scripture has uh, uh, guidance teaching uh, in every area of our lives so if you want to know something specific that god is speaking whether it's about marriage whether it's about um, you know you're going to get married so how to be a, a good spouse how to, or you're you know becoming a parent how to uh, be a good parent or you're you know looking at studying some doctrines you want clarity on that then you don't just pick up, you know, randomly few scripture passages, but you look at the entirety of scripture, what scripture is talking about that specific um, uh, topic in the context you interpret it. So you get a wider understanding about it. And then also the Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you and teach you concerning the, uh, the topic that or the matter that you are studying from scripture. Did that help? Yes, that's helped. So just basically whatever scripture is kind of relevant to whatever topic you need help us work, marriage, whatever. Oh, okay. That I kind of knew, but I thought she, I, I thought she missed something else. But okay, yeah, I understand. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 
So uh, the next one is the quicken word. There are times when we are seeking God's guidance and you, we want God to speak to us. So one of the ways God speaks to us is the written word. You know, he, you're specifically looking at some situation in your life. You want an answer. You want direction. You want guidance. You know, uh, the, God can quicken his word in our spirit man. There are, so how does he quicken it? There are a few things that happens. So when you're reading God's word, whether it's in your devotion in the morning or evening or whatever time, you know, you just are praying and say, God, speak to me through your word. And then suddenly you're reading a scripture passage. You've read it before. Or maybe you've not read it. I, I really don't know. But if you read it before or you heard sermons on that, but suddenly that, you know, there's a verse that just jumps at you from the, or leaps at you from the pages of, scripture and you have a fresh understanding and insight and you say hey this is like the answer for what i was looking for okay i'll give you some examples um when um you know when i was going to bible college uh, i didn't know really how to manage this was my first time out of home uh, going to another city i've never traveled to another city alone you know going and staying there for six years i was wondering how to do it and also you know how i'm going to manage and where are my finances going to come from so when i was praying and as and and you know and asking god and i read my bible that day I remember god spoke to me from first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22 24 sorry 1 Thessalonians 5.24, he who calls you is faithful and he will do it for you. And that was such a great, it just leapt, leapt from scripture. It just hit me and it was just so powerful. It was just such a strong promise. And it's um, 24 years now, I'm still holding, uh, more than 24 years, you know, I'm still holding on to that promise. And I've seen God has been faithful and he has done things in my life life so whenever i've gone through distress or difficult circumstances or situations i've gone back to this promise and said god you said you're faithful you will surely do it do it for me okay in the recent past i for more than a year i was looking for an answer in one specific area of my life i was praying about it and i was going from yes to no yes no to yes you know i was jumping from here and there and uh, god was trying to be patient with me and then finally I said, God, just give me one word because I'm finding myself oscillating from yes to no and no to yes. Sometimes I feel this is right. Sometimes I feel this is not right. And I was just praying and say, God, give me a word. And I was, I remember I was reading my Bible in the night and I just prayed this. I said, God, guide me. Just give me something that is an assurance. And after this, I will just stop. I will not, you know, inquire. I will not press in. I will not think about this issue. And I was just reading God's word from Isaiah chapter 2. And I came to verse 22 and it says, Sever yourself uh, from such a man whose breath is in his nostril, for what account is he? And when I just read, Sever yourself from such a man, that just leapt at me like this. And I said, Oh, this is what God is telling me. This is, you know, he's saying, Hey, no more oscillating. What you need to do is just sever yourself. Sever yourself means just cut yourself off. No more questions asked, period. No more full stop to this whole issue. No more questions asked. And after that, I have not gone back to God. Uh, uh, so it's it's more than four weeks now. I've not gone back, inquired of God, because this word just... This verse just leapt from scripture. I've not read this before. It leapt from scripture to me and I knew this was my um, answer. So there, are there could be times when you're just going through your daily routine, okay, and uh, you're praying and you're uh, looking for direction. You're asking God for guidance. And, this, you know, God can bring back a scripture verse that you have read and can give you direction and leading on what to do right um so i was um, in the just the recent past the last few um two weeks i've been very unwell and i was asked to preach somewhere and i was thinking that i don't have that strength the stamina the ability to uh, preach because i was very very unwell and i was praying and asking god god um you know what should i do and suddenly this whole incident about paul 
uh, came to my mind. Uh, God was speaking to me to that incident. It just came into my spirit, man. It came in my mind. It's my spirit, man. And, uh, you know, about Paul when um, he was, uh, I think in Ephesus or Athens, he was beaten up really badly. And he was, um, uh, you know, dragged out of the city. He was left for dead. And, um, you know, the disciples came and they all thought he was, he was uh, dead. But, you know, it is amazing to read in scripture because it says that, you know, Paul got up, he walked into the city and the very next day he went, started traveling and he was preaching God's word. So I was in a position which is like, you know, my health was really bad. Uh, my levels were really bad, uh, very high. And I was not in a position to do it. And God was saying, this is your answer. Go and preach. Right. Because. Uh, Paul was left for dead, but what did he do? He got up the next morning, he went to the new, next city, and he started preaching God's word. Can you imagine somebody who's stoned, beaten up, left for dead? You know, it'll take like weeks or months for them to recoup, right? But here was Paul getting up. That was supernatural healing. Got up the next day, went to the next city and started preaching. And God was saying, just do it in my strength don't say no okay i'm just going to give you the supernatural strength and i just um, i receive amazing supernatural strength just to preach uh, god's word that day okay so sometimes when you're going to do it daily routines in your life suddenly a scripture verse can come to your mind that can be an answer to your solution to your problem or to the peace of mind that you're looking for or some situation that you are facing okay the third one is god can also speak through uh, sermons that is being preached, right? I'm sure all of you, when you go to church, you go to Bible study groups, fellowship groups, somebody sharing from God's word, and you feel that the preacher or the person who's sharing God's word, everything is just for you. Everything, the answers are just for you. So when you go to church, there are like more than 100 people seated there. And you know, the, the pastor is preaching the sermon. And, you know, there's so many of them and, uh, you know, many of them in the congregation feel, hey, God is speaking to me. I came with this problem, but God is speaking to me. Right. And uh, I've I've heard many times, you know, I have to preach a sermon where, you know, two or three people come or they text me and says, you know, I, I just came to church um, uh, and that word was just for me or the word that you shared just encouraged me, strengthened me. You know, that was just something I needed to hear or it was just God speaking to me. So I'm thinking how three or four people, I don't ask their situations, how they are in different situations, but how God can speak that alone God can do. You know, when you're preaching, when you're teaching, you don't know or the preacher doesn't know that, hey, he's, he's just preaching what God has laid upon his heart, but God is using that message to minister to people. I remember that, you know, uh, when I was just making a decision whether I have to go to Bible college or not, I was not prepared. I was not ready. I did not even think in my, uh, imagine in, that I would be a, you know, into full-time ministry. But when God called me, you know, there was for a week, I was just, you know, discussing with God, basically arguing. He was calling me. I was saying, no, God, I'll do other things. But then I wanted an assurance, you know, something that I can hear from, you know, something to make a strong decision. And that Sunday when I went to church, I remember I was very, very um, broken hearted. I was I had not got admission in any other college. I don't know what's happening with my life. I was in real time of distress and I'm going there. I'm listening to the pastor. And, you know, this word that he spoke came like an arrow and just shot at me. He said, no man can serve two masters, right? You can either choose God or mammon, money. Okay. And I remember that I was in a, in a situation where I had to choose between two things. I wanted to do something very professional. I wanted to get into the science field, do something professional. And here was God calling me into ministry. And I was telling God, God, I will study science. I will get into professional job, but I will also serve in your kingdom. But God was saying, hey, no, full-time ministry. And so this, when the pastor spoke that message, that word just came and hit me, boom, you know, and it was like, God was telling you can't serve two masters. You have to choose. And then that day, I, that day in my spirit, I knew, you know, what I needed to choose. I knew I shouldn't choose science. I had to choose God, you know, though it was very difficult. 
it just came in my heart there was a prompting there was a leading i just took that on okay so uh, sometimes god can speak to us through the word that is being preached the fourth one god can also speak through the our inner voice what is our inner voice our our conscience okay so you know we are tri tripart beings each one of us are tripart beings we have our spirit our soul and our body and our spirit man parallels our natural or our physical man so what do i mean by that how what do i mean that our spirit man parallels our natural or our physical man now our physical man has faculties right we can how do we uh, receive information from the world through our five senses senses right the physical man receives information from the world through our five senses what is our five senses seeing hearing touch smell and taste okay so just like our physical man receives um, you know information through these five senses also our spirit man parallels our physical man our spirit man also receives through these five senses okay so that is why the word of god says taste and see that the lord is good so our spirit man can even taste okay our spirit man can see touch feel uh, uh, you know taste and we can exp and hear we can hear the spirit of god speaking to us in our spirit man so spirit man has faculties and the holy spirit and god speaks through our spirit man okay and the voice of your spirit is your conscience okay so sometimes we can experience god uh, or the holy spirit speaking to us through just a touch we can experience peace or we can experience warmth or we can experience just a burning sensation just feeling okay taste we can hear the spirit uh, the, the voice uh, the spirit speaking to um us we can just sense all of these things we can also feel the touch of the holy spirit or we can just experience the touch of god in our lives whether it's healing restoration refreshing whatever okay so the spirit man has these faculties and god ministers to us through these five senses in our spirit um, man and the voice of your spirit is called your conscience and god uses our conscience to guide us okay so let's look at some scripture passages and then i will explain um further so we are on page number uh, 32 okay so let's all read it together please um job chapter 32 verse 8 all of you are ready page number 32 but there is a spirit in man and the breath of the almighty gives him understanding okay so here is saying that man has a spirit and the breath so that means when god breathes upon us right you can sense it you can feel it you can experience it okay and when he breathes upon us he gives us understanding in our spirit man let's all read together psalm 51 verse 6 please behold you desire truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts you will make me to know wisdom okay so god desires truth in our inward parts what is our inward parts what is your inward part inward part of you your spirit your heart your conscience okay so god desires that you know truth in our inward parts okay and he makes known his wisdom where where does god reveal his wisdom to us in our inward part in your conscience in your heart in your spirit man okay um <clears throat> let's read together psalm chapter uh, sorry proverbs chapter 20 verse 27 all of us together ready the spirit of a man is a lamp of the lord searching all the inner depths of his heart okay so here it says the spirit of a man is like a 
lamp. You know what the lamp does, what light does. It guides us, it leads us, okay? And it also helps us in searching things. So if you want to search something in a dark corner, you put on the light or use a flashlight or your torchlight, you know, which can help you to see things and help you to find what you are looking for, okay? So the spirit of man is a lamp of the Lord searching the inner depths of his heart. So God uses a human spirit to search us, to guide us, to teach us, and to lead us, okay? So our conscience will always bear witness or speak aligned to the word that has been fed in us, okay? So what do I mean by that? You know, it's when God speaks to us in our spirit, man, it's important for us to meditate on God's word, to feed on God's word, and let his word just dwell in our spirit and in our heart. Because when God's word dwells in our spirit and in our heart, then what happens? You know, um, you will be able to do what God is asking you to do. You'll be able to walk in the spirit and your conscience becomes a re reliable guide. Okay, your conscience becomes a reliable guide. So your conscience is always telling you, hey, don't do that, don't say that, go here, don't do that, don't watch that. You know, what you said was wrong, what your attitude was wrong. So that is your conscience. So how do we keep our conscience right? How do we keep our conscience in the right place where God can speak to us is when we are feeding and meditating on God's word right? If you're not feeding and meditating on God's word and you're listening to the things of this world, you are concentrating on things of this world, you're listening to your friends, you're constantly looking at movies and YouTube videos and all of those things that is not enriching and edifying your spirit man, then your conscience is going to work in that same way, right? So the, the world says, hey, somebody, uh, you know, hits you on one cheek, you give them on both the cheeks right if one somebody gives you tells you um, something rude you give them back you know do tit for tat right so that is what the world teaches us and our conscience can be trained according to what who we are listening to right mm -hmm. so that is why it's important for us to train our conscience That is why it's important for us to train our conscience. And how do we con no, not that there. How do we train our conscience? By the word of God. The more we soak ourselves in God's word, the more we are meditating on God's word, you know, our conscience becomes a reliable guide. Then you don't have to think, hey, did my conscience tell me to do the right thing? You know, you know for sure because your conscience is being guided and being trained by the word of God, okay? We also know that as we are part of the new covenant, God writes his word and in our hearts and his and our minds, right? That's what we read in um, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 and 11, okay? Thank you. Uh, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10. No, it's not come on. Hebrews chapter uh, 8, verse 10 and 11 says that we are part of a new covenant, okay, and God writes his word on our minds and our hearts. Can somebody please read Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 and 11, please? Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 and 11, can somebody read that? Where's the mic? Where's the mic? For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother saying, know the Lord for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them to the greatest of them. Amen. Thank you, Juliana. So here we see that even as we are part of the new covenant, what does God do? He writes his word upon our heart and our mind, right? And even as he writes his heart upon our word upon our heart and our mind, what will it enable us to do? Each one of us will know what God wants us to do. 
the path that he wants us to take, the choices that he wants us to make. And here this verse also says that no longer anyone will have to teach you because the word that is written on your heart and your mind will automatically teach you. Okay, so you need to ask yourself, hey, is my conscience right before God or is your conscience smeared? You know, some of our conscience is smeared. That's why we can keep on talking lies. Some of our conscience is so smeared. That is why we can keep on looking at, you know, dirty things on YouTube, in, in, you know, on, in videos. And it doesn't prick our conscience, our mind. Some of us can constantly, you know, use bad words and does not affect us because our conscience is kind of dead to those things, right? So we should not let our conscience die to things, um, but we need to always keep our conscience right before God. And how do we do that? By feeding our spirit man with God's word, filling our heart and mind with God's word okay look at what apostle paul says he says i live with all good conscience before god and man okay so he says i have determined or i have endeavored to keep a clear conscience so how can paul say that hey i have lived with all good conscience before god and man he's saying before god and man and how was he able to do it because he was somebody who was constantly you know, in intimacy with God, reading God's word, you know, dwelling on God's word and also, um, uh, you know, spending time in prayer. So when you're feeding your conscience or your spirit with the word, you're praying in the spirit, you're keeping your spirit in submission to the Holy Spirit. Okay. Then the voice of your own spirit will be aligned to the word of God. It will be aligned to the Holy Spirit and you will not violate your conscience so sometimes you can say hey i everyone say god speaks god speaks i can't hear god speaking right why can't you hear god speaking or the holy spirit speaking is maybe because there's disobedience there's sin there's no submission and you are not aligning yourself your will your heart and mind to god's word so that is why god's word is such a important place in our lives the more you study god's word the more you are strong in your spirit man the more you have a discernment guidance and leading in what to do and how to live your life okay the next thing is even as god leads us and guides us through his word it's important that we rightly divide his word okay bottom of page number 33 is second timothy chapter 2 verse 15 so let's all read it out together please be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, so what does it mean here? Even as we look for guidance and, you know, look to God's word to make decisions and choices in life, it's important that we rightly divide God's word. What does it mean by rightly divide? It means make a straight cut you know, uh, dissect or expound correctly, you know, correctly cut it, dissect it correctly, okay? So we need to, when we look for guidance in God's word, it's important that we don't just take a scripture verse and, you know, uh, look at it in isolation and try to, uh, you know, bring it uh, uh, applicable, make it applicable in our situation, that will lead to, sometimes can lead to misinterpretation and misapplication of his word. But it's important for us to look at it in context, in entirety of scripture, and, you know, see what God is speaking to you and how he's leading you through that situation and that problem. Okay, so an incorrect understanding of God's word will lead to misinterpretation of God's word and will cause all kinds of problems and would also lead to strange doctrines that, you know, will get you into more difficulties, more problems, and it'll be like bad food that you're eating. You know, when you eat bad food, what happens? It's not going to benefit you. It's not good for your health. It will make you spiritually sick. So it's important that we study the whole counsel of God to understand his ways and the thoughts of God. While saying this, also when we are talking about how to rightly divide God's word, 
Now, sometimes people say, God, I want an answer for this situation. So you open, I'm going to open my Bible, whichever, you know, chapter and verse I open it to and whichever verse I read first, that will be my answer, right? Sometimes we do that, right? Or we just put a finger, we say, we close our eyes and we just put a finger and say, God, whichever, wherever my finger is, that is the verse for my answer, right? You know, we can't do that. It's... Um, we need to re read, meditate, and study God's word. We cannot play with God's word, okay? Sometimes God can use it, you know, if he chooses to, to help us to understand, you know, or bring his purposes to come to pass. But that does not mean that, you know, this is how God wants us to use his word, okay? We read God's word, we pray, we ask him to speak, and as we are reading, he can just tell us, hey, this is the worst for your answer. Or it will just leap at you or jump at you. Or when you're reading something, you know for sure to the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, this is the answer for your uh, problem. Okay. Sometimes it's also possible that we take scripture out of context and twist and turn it and support it for our own selfish interests. Now, for example, you know, a young man falls in love with a young girl. Okay. And... Um, um, and everything that he's looking at in his life, he's just seeing her. So every time he's reading God's word, you know, he's thinking this is for us. You know, this is for both of us to gather. And soon after he reads the Bible, he's, uh, you know, texting her and saying, hey, I read this verse, I read this verse, this is talking about us, this is what this uh, God is going to do. And so when she opens the Bible and reads, she's like, Hey, this is nowhere connected to marriage. This is nowhere connected to about us coming together, you know, and it has nothing to do about both of us. I don't know what this young man is saying, and it's going to lead her into more confusion and, you know, pressure. Okay. But this man is so caught up and so much in love. Everything that he's seeing and he's reading, everything is. Everything that he's seeing and reading is just with her in picture and in mind. Now that is, you know, using the scripture in the wrong context, in the wrong way. Okay. So we shouldn't misuse scripture. Sometimes what happens is when we want to get back at people. What's wrong? When we want to get back at people, you know, when we are preaching sermons, we can take up all these verses and we can actually bombard them, right? Or when, you know, you're angry with your spouse, you're angry with somebody in your family or your colleague or somebody in church, you can say, you know, God spoke to me. He said this, this is a scripture verse. And indirectly, you're trying to get the message across. Well, that is wrong. Okay, if God has spoken to you. You just need to pray about it, you know, uh, pray for that person, you know, but don't try to use scripture verses uh, to put down people, to condemn people, and in the wrong ways that I have uh, mentioned, okay? So therefore, it's very important that young people, even older people, you know, need to learn how to use God's word, how to receive God's word, and how to correctly interpret God's word, okay? Okay, so there's a question from Saubhagya. Sometimes we get the word of God inside us in some situations or struggles, is that our conscience speaking or Holy Spirit, how to discern between the two? Okay, so it can, yeah, your, the Holy, I said the Holy Spirit can speak through your conscience. Your conscience is, uh, uh, so when you get a, a, a verse, you know that it is the Holy Spirit speaking to you because Jesus says the Holy Spirit will, um, uh, you know, uh, r remind you of the things that I have spoken to you okay so that is the holy spirit speaking and your conscience can tell you hey yes this is the holy spirit speaking to you this is the answer for your problem did that help saubhagya and of course god can speak through our conscience so he can also you know affirm through your conscience that this is uh, the worst that you know the holy spirit has given to you and it's not something that just come you know, from the top of your head or your mind or something that you read, but it's something that God has spoken to you.
Okay. Any questions uh, regarding this chapter? No? Okay, so uh, something that I have experienced in my own life is whenever I've looked for answers, it's always come through the Bible. It's always from the scripture. God has always spoken to me through the scripture. Even when I'm praying, he just gives me answers from, uh, from uh, scripture. Uh, just two days back, I've been praying about some area of my life. And I'm saying, God, I've been praying this area for such a long time. What are you trying to say? What is the answer? What should I do? And then this whole, you know, uh, aunt, this, um, this, you know, scripture passage came into my mind where Abraham is going to sacrifice his son. And he went with the knife, with the fire, and with the son to be sacrificed. But you know, when he laid him on his altar, God gave the sacrifice. God provided. So God was giving me the answer. I'm going to provide. You don't have to look for the sacrifice. You just be willing to do what I have asked you to do and I will just provide for you. I will show you, bring you that sacrifice. And that was just so powerful. God was saying, I, I will just provide. I am Jehovah Jireh, your provider. You don't have to ask anyone. Yes, Shani? Yeah, I'm just a little bit confused. I know you said, when I asked the first question, um, tracking my thoughts. So the, when you were saying about it was about rightly dividing the word. You were saying that you can't just use a scripture. You have to use um, more than just a scripture. Look, look at, sorry, look at more. You were saying that you can't just use a scripture to get like, like the word that you need or something like an answer like that. You were saying you have to look at the word in context. Can you explain that more? Because I'm confused because I've heard people saying they can get an answer from just what scripture. But what you're saying, you. It can't just be one scripture, it has to be more. Or, I'm sorry, just one verse. Okay. So, um, for example, um, you know, uh, God promises us that, um, you know, um, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the, uh, he will give you the desires of your heart. Okay. So you are, uh, you know, you're desiring something, you're looking for something, and, you know, you're saying, okay, God has given me the answer, that I'm desiring this, and this is my answer, that, you know, he's giving it to me. But God can actually be speaking and telling you, hey, I want you to, when will God grant you the desires of your heart? When you delight yourself in the Lord. Psalm 37 verse 4. So what God is actually teaching in that context is, Hey, I will give, grant you the desires of the heart, of your heart, but at this time, I want you to delight yourself in me. But we can get it totally wrong, and we can, we can go about so excited and say, God is going to give the desires of my heart, but God is actually saying he will give you the desires of the heart, but what you need to do first is to delight yourself in the Lord. And when you don't, when you, you don't see the answer come through, you get disappointed, you get angry with God, and you can go away with God, but God is actually saying, speaking to you. So you need to spe see in context what the scripture passage is saying. The scripture passage is saying, first, you need to delight yourself in the Lord, and then he will grant you the desires of the your heart. Also, likewise, when you read John chapter 15, it says, you know, uh, you will bear much fruit. When will you bear much, much fruit? When God says, when you abide in my word and my word abides in you, you will bear much fruit. But we are just reading and saying, hey, I'm going to bear much fruit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You're just confessing that. But what, what, is God, is, what is God teaching you? So you need to ask God, what are you teaching me to this verse? Yes, you're telling me that I need, I'll, I need to bear fruit. Are you telling me something more? And God is saying, yes. You know, I want you to delight yourself in my word. I want you to abide in my word. I want you to feed on my word. You are not spending time in my word. So it's important to not just take scripture passages out of context and just uh, interpret that and get that as an answer, but also see what the Spirit of God is speaking and guiding you and leading you through that scripture passage. Did that help? Yes, thank you. 
Okay. Okay, we'll move on to the next chapter, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Okay, we've already looked at it, touched about uh, touched uh, about this a little bit in fulfilling God's purpose, but we look at the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Can somebody please read John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14, please? However, when he when he the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you in, into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So who's speaking here? Who's speaking here? Jesus. Yes, please look into your notes or you know your Bibles. And who is Jesus speaking about? Who is Jesus speaking about? The Holy Spirit. And what does he say the Holy Spirit will do? The Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. Okay. He will guide you into all truth. He says the Holy Spirit is somebody who will speak to you. He will tell you things to come. He will take what is of mine and declare it to you. So the Holy Spirit is, what is the Holy Spirit doing in your life? He's guiding in you into all truth. What else? What else is the Holy Spirit doing? Look at your publication. It's there. He's guiding you into all truth. Yes. What else? Huh? He tell you. He will tell you things to come. Yes. And he will declare what God has planned and purpose for you. Okay. So here the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you, lead you, guide you, tell you about what is going to come in the future. He's going to do everything. But what should you do? What should you do? You should be willing to listen to the Holy Spirit. Okay. And the Holy Spirit will guide you. He, he will lead you into everything that is concerning the truths in your life. He will show you the way into all truth. He will show you the things to come. That means he's also going to show you things ahead of time, what is going to happen in your life. How exciting. Yes or no? How wonderful. So why is he guiding you and leading you into things to come so that you can prepare yourself? So what should you and I do? You need to open your heart and say, God, I want to experience this. You are saying, telling us that the Holy Spirit is going to teach us, guide us into all truth. He's going to speak to us. He's going to show us things to come. God, I want to experience this. I want to walk in this in my own life. So pray and ask God. So every time you are praying, you know, say, God, you said the Holy Spirit will guide me, teach me, lead me into all truth. Show me what things are to come. So I'm opening my heart. Holy Spirit, speak to me. I want to experience this and I want to walk in this in my life. Okay. Can somebody refer, uh, read 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 16, please? But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of a man the things which has preferred for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Yes, go ahead. For what man knows the things of a man, except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of the God except, except the spirit of God. No, he have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that we have freely given to us by God. Things, uh, these things also speak, not in the words uh, which man wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can we know them because they are spiritual uh, discern. Uh, but he, he who uh, judges all things, yet he himself uh, rightly judges by one, no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Thank you. We'll uh, go for a break and we'll come back and then uh, we will study or uh, see what we can learn from this scripture passage.